Bright installations, bold performances, provocative pictures, and painted walls. Art has long been living in the new era and formation. Ask questions, be surprised, experience new sensations, and set off on an exciting journey through the world of contemporary art with Modern Art Program. Today in the program, Contemporary Art in Hotels, Shape of Things 18 Years Later, in the workshop of Zitabel Duo, Love Theme and Works of Andre Noda, New Format of Audio Guides. How often do we stay in hotels when traveling? For tourists, hotels are a place where you can relax after long walks and a rich cultural program. It is unlikely that travelers pay attention to what surrounds them inside these rooms, although often they become practically centers of art. Today we'll talk about art objects that decorate public places as hotels. <laughs> Walls of this particular room are decorated with paintings and art objects. This horse was painted by one German artist, Ursula Frank. Paintings in each room are not like in the other room. You will not find duplicate pictures. They were all chosen for a specific room. Walking around the hotel, you can feel the spirit of the steps in everything. Art objects decorating this space are dedicated to Kazakhstan, a country with incredible natural resources. Bright and unique landscapes as well as images of horses have become the main theme for art objects. We don't use bright ornaments or art objects of interior design. If you pay attention to textiles, carpets, ornaments and our pillows, you can see that they are all united by a very elegant modern touch. This is a modern interpretation of Kazakh culture in this particular interior design. The concept of design was developed by a company from Hong Kong. It is one of the leading agencies for the design of international hotels. Peter Silling, a German architect and designer, advised the hotel on the selection of art objects taking into account local specifics. The author of these sculptures is Frank Volney, German sculptor and musician, a person who has been engaged in the development of contemporary art. It is no accident that these two heads were chosen as the main art objects that people will remember forever. First, the horse is a symbol of Kazakhstan, the country, and getting into the lobby, the guests immediately understand where they are, what country they are, how much the image of the horse is important for Kazakhstan and the Kazakh people. Objects in public spaces become an integral part of the interior. This is not a temporary exposition which easily changes its location. Spectators should buy a ticket to look at such art. In addition, these objects are not for sale. We have had occasions where the guests like the artworks very much, they wanted to buy them. But our paintings as an object of the interior of our hotel are not for sale. We can give recommendations, of course, refer to the company that helped us with the design. Or we provide a list of authors who can create something similar. One of the purposes of placing art objects in hotels is the fact-finding. Tourists get acquainted with the culture of the country even before they see its sites, visit museums, exhibitions and theaters. Modern art in this case is a wonderful helper. The art of building relationships and attitude to contemporary art. These questions are the focus of the new production of the order of things. It would seem, how can you combine two completely different topics? But the plot of the play develops so unexpectedly that at some point it is already impossible to separate one from the other. This is the play in which we tried to talk, to speculate on the topic of relationships. What are they in general? What is love? What is true love or what is untrue love? What does betrayal mean? The basis for the play was the play by the American playwright Neil Laboot. He wrote it in 2000. Later, Laboot made a film based on the play. The film failed at the box office. After 18 years, the Kazakh director returned to this work and decided to present a modern production to the viewer. I thought we could talk about a kiss. It's a pity you're leaving. 
We will not talk about this. This is out of the question. The corrections were mainly related to adapt the language of the play to modern days. Some more nuances connected with time and territories, we had to make some things clear. But most of the original text was preserved. Modest guy Adam meets with rebel Eva. Love for the girl radically changes the young man. He grows thin, no longer wears glasses with diopters, wears a new fashionable hairstyle. At first glance, positive changes in the name of relationships. But suddenly it turns out that Adam is just part of the art project of Eve. At this moment, the culmination begins. The guy has to decide how does he feel about his girlfriend and at the same time about contemporary art. This performance is relevant in our time. Many people mostly pay attention to appearance. People live in social networks. They publish their ideal photos with ideal faces and beautiful clothes, but this is not the most important thing. Nevertheless, it is necessary to evolve internally and to always be open and positive. The play was set in just two months. It involved non-professional actors. The team was so invested into the idea that they didn't play their roles but live them. For what can you punish so hard? It's not because of a kiss that you hate me so much. You always berated me. My character is probably the most relatable to the viewer. She is the easiest to sympathize with. She is definitely a victim of circumstances. She is the only one in this play who is an absolute victim. The most humane and clever character. Therefore, it was easy to sympathize with her. Now the performance is in demand among Kazakhstani spectators. Students and retirees come to reflect on the topic of relationships. 18 years ago, the play of Neil Labuta did not arouse the audience's delight. And today everyone finds something important for themselves. Hello, come in, please. Here is our workshop. The whole apartment is our workshop. We can create here as much as we like. Zita Sultanbaeva, Ablikim Akmulaev, family art duet, Zitabil. They work in different genres of contemporary art, performance, video art, photography and painting. The works of the creative duo are kept in private collections around the world as well as in the Museum of Nonconformist Art in the United States. Zita and Ablikim are regular participants of international exhibitions in Europe and CIS countries. In 2016, their 14-year-old daughter, Aurelia, joined the duet. Now we are preparing for a new exhibition. This exhibition is called From Hatred to Love. Ablikim is going to make installations, plus he paints. My installation, one of them, will, for example, my installation will consist of different skull caps and I will sew these skull caps to the fabric and I also have a suitcase. In general, I want to tell everyone and to myself that each person inside is a suitcase of love. And I want to invite people to come to the exhibition, open their personal suitcases of love and live surrounded with this love. What does inspire you? I am inspired by something not material. It may exist or may not exist. And it's impossible to calculate this inspiration. It happened that my turbulent life was so swirled up that I once burned all my paintings and works in 1991. After that, a new stage of life began, probably. What materials do you use in your work? After graduating from the Theatrical Art Institute, I got carried away with monotypes. To work with monotype, printing ink is used. After you add watercolor, 
tempera, crayons, colored pencils. In general, you work with texture. What do you want to convey to people through your work? All the exhibitions that we did were usually devoted to a particular topic. In 2001 to 2002, there was an exhibition, Gods and Puppets. There was an idea to show that a person is a dependent being, and as a rule, such a person is always ruled by large puppets. And over larger puppets, even bigger puppets rise. There were other exhibitions. For example, we sometimes interspersed heavy philosophical themes with exhibitions of lighter topics. Do you have creative crises? There are pauses, but you don't need to be afraid of them. Because a person is not a machine, he must take some breaks from time to time. During these stops, you simply zero out your inspiration, and this allows you to find new ideas. What does beauty mean to you? Beauty, it is the opposite thing of ugliness. Aurelia, what are your paintings about? My work, perhaps, for someone is rather gloomy. I find inspiration in problems of society or problems within us. I'm inspired by the music I listen to. This is probably the brightest work. It speaks of love because we are all love, and in all of us there is love, and every person is egocentric, and he is the center of himself and thinks he is the center of the universe. What is your favorite work? This is one of my most favorite works because it means a lot to me. I created it in 2017. It was a very difficult period for me. I tried to describe my state at that moment, which was just explosive. And for a very long time, I worked on it and tried to make it very rough. How do parents influence your work? They play a very big role in my life because, first of all, my parents, they inspire me. I learn something from them. I can say that we have different views on many things because we represent different generations and still we live together, we get along well, and we love each other. Love in all its manifestations always inspires artists. Thanks to a variety of works of art appear, not necessarily in bright colors and with the image of hearts. Often you can see it in other works too. For example, a new exhibition of Andre Noda. The artist claims that all of his works, from paintings to ceramics, is nothing more than a manifestation of love. This is love and everything that comes from it. Love between a man and a woman, children, animals and nature. They are all subjects to this word. This word is filled with beauty and spring, and the rest of it already seems to flow from this. It might seem big or small, but I assure you, this topic is inexhaustible. The name of the exhibition is Sap Sarap. It reflects not the theme of the exhibition, but the genre of contemporary art. Here you can see graphic pictures of Andre Noda, made in the technique of scratchboard. Such drawings appear by scratching with a sharp paper tool, filled with mascara. Therefore, grafting is sometimes called a scratch. Drawings in the style of scratchboard are similar to engravings. And if you pre-paint a sheet of paper in different colors, then the drawing turns out more vivid. Graphics to many people might seem boring, something very gray. And such an exhibition can convince a lot of skeptics. Because Andre manages to combine graphics with painting, we get a very interesting symbiosis. Bright, colorful, lively, very close to a real painting. At the same time, the technique is very complicated. According to Andre, his wife has not ceased to be his muse for many years. 
so the artist breaks the stereotype of the inconsistency of creative natures. Despite the permanent source of inspiration, the artist's works are not similar to each other. Each viewer finds something in them for himself. It is very interesting to see how such an emotional, temperamental person can create such works. There is a lot of humor here and everything is loaded with such good, such light energy. I remember his every work. In the paintings of Andrei Noda and the colors and images, everything is simple and simultaneously difficult. Through them, the artist brings people love and inner harmony. I got acquainted with his work relatively recently, but with confidence I can say that this is one of my favorite Kazakh artists. In his works, he reflects on issues that are very important for each person, such as love, the memory of close people, and it is very relatable. Almost simultaneously with the exhibition of Andre Noda in Almaty, an exposition was opened in Moscow. In 2018, the artist plans to have a few other events, in particular participation in the exhibition in New York. Part of the box in the finished product hangs on the wall and the other part is unfolded perpendicular to it and represents such, conditionally speaking, perception slot. And the viewer can look into the exposure hole and see a part of the landscape that is presented on the frame box. Art critic Yulia Sorokina is in the creative process. She records the audio guide to the exhibition of the artist Alexander Ugai. The text of Yulia did not pass preliminary editing, and during the recording she can improvise. This is the essence of the new application that appeared in Kazakhstan. According to the idea of its authors, more live audio guides will help bring contemporary art and the viewer closer together. Everyone who organizes an exhibition faces a dilemma, or they remove the long text about the exhibition and it's hard for a viewer to understand anything. Either they introduce curatorial excursions, or they put out a huge number of text, which visually makes the exhibition heavier. The initiators of the application are Kazakh artist Zoya Falkova and Anton Platonov. They, like no one else, understand the relevance of such an invention. Only large museums exhibiting masterpieces of classics can afford audio guides. If we talk about works of contemporary art, then as a rule, these are temporary exhibitions in galleries. Not always the text that hangs next to the work explains the work well, because often the artist's text is very poetic or too complicated. Modern art, in principle, requires a lot of decoding. Modern art needs an appropriate approach. That's why it was decided to create an innovative audio guide. First of all, you can get acquainted with objects of art without leaving home. Second of all, behind each comment there is a certain person. You see an expert, say an art critic, Olga Baturina, and she reads for you the audio guide in the way that she wants to read. She leads you through the museum as she would conduct a tour for her students. She can say just a word or two, but they will be inspirational. They will create the same value for art. Understanding of art, it is not through information that occurs, but through some kind of emotional connection with it. Of course, not everyone can be the author of the audio guide. Exclusively artists, exhibition curators and art critics with a good reputation. Before the publication, the text for audio guides are carefully checked. In the future, we plan to introduce a system of invites where the rating of the audio guide, the rating of the expert, will enable these experts to invite other experts. At the moment, we are giving the opportunity to record audio guides only to those people whom we fully trust. The application is available to a wide audience. Therefore, it will allow acquainting any citizen of the planet with modern art of Kazakhstan. At the moment, a trial audio guide is tested with one of the exhibitions translated into English. And this is only the beginning. The authors of the project assure. We have a large number of agreements with artists, with curators throughout the CIS region. The application is available for download around the world. So far, we translate all the textual information only into English. But then we plan to localize it into Chinese, because there is also an interesting art market and it is constantly growing and becoming more open. Thus, contemporary art becomes global. 
If artists and art critics from around the world join the project, every art connoisseur will have the opportunity to visit even those exhibitions that he could not visit due to the long distances.